Why do things sink or float? Find out now. Be strong. Be strong. Okay, Tiny Adventurers, today we are going to talk about why things float and why things sink. You all have seen in your day-to-day -day life that some things float and some things sink. Some things float and some things sink. And that seems to be a, a kind of obvious reason for this happening. The obvious reason is... Oh, teacher, teacher, it's heavy things that sink and light things that float, teacher! Yes, Jackazard, the, the, the obvious reason would be that heavy things sink, whereas light things float. But, um, actually, there are some really very heavy things that seem to float, and some really very light things that seem to sink. So that can't be the only thing that's going on here. The thing we need to keep in mind with today's work is the idea of displacement. Displacement is how much water is pushed away by an object. Now, we know that when an object sinks, it must be pushing away that water. We know that water is those molecules of hydrogen and oxygen, and it must be, an object must be pushing away those water marbles. We can see these little cups, look, that a very small marble will push away a marble-sized amount of water, whereas a, a very big marble will push away a bigger marble-sized volume of water. The greater a volume of something, the more water it will push away. The less volume, the less water it will push away. And in physics, we're, we're always thinking about this idea of balance. Balance. And here, the balance is between the force of gravity pulling something down and the, the force of the water Pushing it back up. More water being displaced. It's more water pushing our boat back up. It's that balance which will decide if something floats or something sinks. It's time for an experiment. Uh -huh. For our experiment, all we need is a piece of paper. Fold the corner of my paper up to make a square. Like this. And then I need to get my scissors. And I need to cut across to make my square. Like this. Now I have a square of paper. I wonder how many marbles that square of paper could float. It looks like the answer is three. You could put three marbles onto just a single bit of paper. The thing I need to do is get my bit of paper and fold up the edges in order to give it a little bit more volume to displace things. Looks a bit more like a boat now, doesn't it? How many marbles will it take to sink my boat? Wow, I mean, even with all the 
the marbles I had in my little bucket there, it wasn't enough to sink it. Although, when we left it for a while... Great, so it looks like we have a, an easy set of variables we can use for our experiment. We could vary how high the wall of our boat is. We could vary, perhaps, how much tape we use. Or we could maybe vary something a little bit more exciting, like what if we added salt to the water? Adding more molecules, pushing our boat up. What might that do? Or what about if we added vinegar instead of water? Or orange juice? Or or apple juice, or, or, I don't know, banana juice, if that's possible. Let's think about what these variables might do to our experiment. Send in a video of your boat, and let me know if it floated or it sank. Like the video!